Hi, I'm Matt Boyer with Superflow Dynamometers. Today we're going to go over just some of the basic maintenance that you should perform from time to time um, on your new Superflow PowerMark dynamometer. So the most regular component on the Superflow PowerMark that you'll need to access and make sure that you do maintenance on is going to be the front CV joint on the drive shaft. That's going to be the CV joint that is mounted to the drive plate adapter, which in turn is mounted to the flywheel that you mount it to your engine. This you will want to grease with the Redline CV2 synthetic grease that came with the dyno and you'll want to go ahead and hit each one of the Zerk fittings on it. Every two engines, generally we say hit it with at least one shot of grease every engine. The reason why is that you're constantly going to be removing this and replacing it, so just make sure that you always have some fresh grease in there. You can't over grease this because the CV joint booty is a not a firm clamped fitting. So no matter how much grease you put in, they will always will have extra coming out of there. And the only downside to that is that you may get grease on your wall, but it's definitely cheaper to clean the walls than it is to replace an ungreased CV joint. So again, you want to go ahead and hit this with grease once every engine or maybe two engines. So along with the front CV joint, which we just covered, you also have a rear CV joint hidden back at the very rear of the drive shaft. You will need to get to this uh, from time to time as well. To get to that, you just need to go ahead and remove these four 3 8 bolts. So once you've removed that drive shaft, that rear drive shaft guard, now you can access this CV joint. Just like the front CV joint, you'll have several Zerk fittings around the actual CV joint. You'll need to use the same Redline CV2 synthetic grease that we supplied with the dynamometer and that you used on the front CV joint. Now, because this rear CV joint is at the rear of our two-part compliant drive shaft, it's not picking up nearly the same amount of harmonics that the front CV joint is, which basically amounts to not as much rattle in it. So the greasing schedule on this is a little bit less than it is on the front drive shaft, the front CV joint. You only need to get to this once a month, maybe, or once every, say, 10 engines. Those are usually good guidelines. You'll need to go ahead and pump several pumps into each Zerk fitting, and just like the front CV joint, you cannot grease these enough. Any extra grease is going to come out of the CV joint booty, and it will be contained inside the drive shaft cover. As long as you go ahead and remember to grease these once a month or once every 10 engines, you should have years and years of good service. So after we've gone ahead and made sure that we've greased this, while we still have the drive shaft cover off, we also want to check one other thing back here. And that's going to be the cleanliness of the RPM pickup gear and the magnetic sensor. As you'll notice right here, you have a 60 tooth gear and this is our magnetic sensor. This is where the dynamometer gets the entire RPM information. If you get a lot of grease buildup back in the rear shaft or the rear part of the drive shaft cover, what can end up happening is you can get grease with little men metallic filings built up in between the teeth. And if you don't keep it clean enough, pretty soon that 60 tooth wheel will start to look more like a zero tooth wheel and you'll have no RPM signal. Once you have no RPM signal, you're not going to have control of the dyno. So again, while you're back here with the drive shaft cover off, go ahead and make sure that that's all nice and clean. Normally just hitting it with some non-chlorinated brake cleaner will do you fine. After checking the health and grease levels on the two CV joints on the front and the rear of the drive shaft, the only other components on the Superflow PowerMark that you are going to have to keep greased are going to be the two high-speed bearings in the absorption unit, this being the absorption unit. The high speed bearings are the ones that are turning at engine speed, so you'll need to make sure that you do hit them with the proper grease, which you will have received from Superflow. And unlike the CV joints, it's not going to be the Red Lion CV2, but rather it's going to be the Klubler NBU-15. No other grease should be used, as some greases will not be compatible, so you always want to make sure that you get the proper Klubler grease to grease those. You can, of course, buy replacement grease from Superflow. Now, you'll need to go ahead and grease in just two locations. The first location is going to be on the front stator of the absorption unit, and you can find it right here. That Zerk fitting is right there for the front, 
there's going to be a corresponding Zerk fitting for the rear on the opposite side, on the passenger side of the dyno, again on the rear stator. You'll need to go ahead and hit those with grease, about four pumps of grease, every generally 250 hours of operation. So in a high production environment, that's going to be every couple of months. If it's going to be a lower uh, production environment, I would probably do it at least twice a year. Generally, we also recommend that you have an engine idling while you grease, just to make sure that those four pumps get distributed evenly around the bearing. Now, unlike the CV joints, you can over grease these, so please make sure that you only grease about four pumps every 250 hours of rotation. And that's basically it. As long as you make sure that you keep those four places on the Superflow PowerMark greased at the intervals that we described, you should have years of trouble-free service on your Superflow PowerMark.